How did you get involved in Balkan politics? Well, I've always been interested in the Balkans, but of course, uh, becoming Canada's ambassador to the former Yugoslavia was uh, was the highlight, and uh, that got me deeply involved uh, in uh, the events that were taking place in the early 90s with the beginning of the breakup of Yugoslavia. And ever since then, I've taken a very intense interest in what's happened there. Uh, why are you against the independence of Kosovo? Well, I'm against it primarily because it's in violation of international law. It uh, violates the principle of territorial integrity that is enshrined in the United Nations Charter. And it uh, is also uh, contrary to the Helsinki Final Accords of 1975, which not only reinforce the concept of territorial integrity of sovereign states, but went a little further and said that borders were inviolable and could not be changed unilaterally. That's why I'm against uh, this illegal act on the part of the United States and some of the NATO countries, including, unfortunately, Canada. What should Canada do at this point? Well, the honorable thing to have done would not to have been not to have recognized Kosovo. Uh, after all, one of the pillars of Canadian foreign policy uh, since the end of the Second World War has been adherence to the principles of the United Nations Charter. We broke that once when we participated in the bombing of Kosovo in 1999, contrary to international law and the UN Charter, and uh, we stood up to the Americans in the invasion of Iraq and said we wouldn't do it because it was in violation of the Charter. But now again we've slipped and uh, have gone along with uh, our neighbor to the south with their insistence that we join them in recognizing Kosovo. I think uh, I would like to see us reverse that decision. I don't think it'll happen soon, but I doubt if uh, Kosovo will ever get international acceptance. There's only been about 30 or 35 countries out of the 192 in the United Nations that have recognized Kosovo. I doubt if it'll ever get into the UN. It'll become uh, another failed state in, in the Balkans. How did you get involved in the Balkans issue? Um, as a publisher of a Canadian military magazine um, back in the late 80s, early 90s, my focus was on the Canadian military, which ended up being deployed into Croatia and into Bosnia. So in that sense, it was natural. Wherever they were going, I was going. And I didn't go into the Balkans to cover the bigger picture of what was happening so much as I went in there to, um, to, to report on what the soldiers saw, what the soldiers did. And through that coverage, through that exposure to the Balkans, um, over the course of time, you begin to question some of the policies, you begin to see what the soldiers are seeing, and from there you realize that the, the demonization of the Serbs, the simplification of a good guy, bad guy situation wasn't exactly what our soldiers were seeing on the ground, and it wasn't, wasn't what I was seeing on the ground. So you become more or less drawn into it, and by 1999, um, my views were, of course, based on experience and, and research that ran counter to what the mainstream media was saying, and I felt strong enough, of course, to go into into Serbia during the bombing, which uh, I then experienced the bombing campaign with the Serbian people, and of course that's something which you're not going to forget, going in, seeing the other side of the coin, getting a different perspective on the war, um, I think has been incredibly educational, and that's probably why I have a different viewpoint than many others. Why are you against Kosovo's independence? Um, Kosovo is, is not independent in any true sense of the word. I mean, it's presently occupied by some 17,000 NATO forces um, trying to provide a secure environment because, of course, of all the revenge killings, as they call them, between the Albanians and the Serbs. I mean, essentially, ethnic cleansing that is going on. Um, there's undertones of it all the time against non-Albanians inside Kosovo. Even with the presence of NATO troops, they can't prevent it. Economically, Kosovo is dependent entirely upon foreign aid, some 450 million euros per year. Um, it's just one lowball estimate of how much is being put in there. That doesn't include the offsets. It doesn't include the fact that most of the 50% of Albanians that do have a job are working for either an international agency or to provide support for the NATO troops that are stationed there or the UN police. There's no real economy in Kosovo. In fact, the largest legal export um, in the Kosovo right now, which I learned this on my last trip in from the, from the UN source, is uh, scrap metal from auto junkyards. That is the single most illegal source of revenue for, for the country of Kosovo. So 
foreign aid, foreign forces. It belongs to Serbia. It's recognized. I mean, 160 something countries refuse to recognize the unilateral declaration. So it's hanging in some sort of limbo right now. And if countries wise up and want to respect the UN Charter, um, we may see some of those recognitions revoked as of September. Uh, what should Canada do at this point regarding Kosovo? Canada has made a huge mistake in, in recognizing the unrecognizable, and Canada should know better. Canada was involved in the bombing campaign. Canada did send troops in in the initial days to, to do the uh, security work that was going on. We pulled the battalion out of there, I think, in early uh, 2001. Um, as a result of that, we had kept a, a small diplomatic mission, which was essentially an embassy in Pristina. They closed that two years ago after the pogrom in 2004. Uh, they said it was for economic reasons, but there may have been other reasons. But once they did that, they pretty much lost touch with what was going on on the ground, which I think may have been a decision that they could be willfully blind, um, that they didn't have to have official reports telling them just how dire the situation was, how corrupt the uh, politicians were inside Kosovo. All of the politicians in, in Kosovo now um, have their roots in the Uchika, Haradina, Tachi, Agomcheku. All of these guys were commanders in a a force, a rebel force, which is essentially the Albanian force in a civil war against the non-Albanians in that country. So essentially now that there's a political leadership, it's very difficult to convince non-Albanians that they're going to have a safe, secure position in a future independent Kosovo. So if those reports are coming back, people knew about the economic situation, it would have been much more difficult for us to, to accept the American you know, position and to accept the pressure for them to recognize independence as it is now. Um, we're sort of um, telling ourselves that it's okay because others did the same thing. Other G8 nations have done it. Americans wanted us to do it, so you know how bad can it be? Well, in fact, it can be very bad, and I think that perhaps we might use the opportunity of the UN General Assembly in September to rethink that position. Thank you very much.